So now we have the car in the scene and we're going to talk about um, different types of cameras and how they can uh, affect the way the car looks, um, especially if you're rendering without a backplate, for example in the studio like we have here. So we can uh, take a quick look at the camera settings uh, by default. Um, the most important thing by default the camera focal length is here, it's set to 28 millimeters, so just under 29 millimeters. Now that's, in my opinion, pretty pretty wide for a car, I guess, but um, it's always down to personal preference. And I, you know, I usually prefer 35 millimeters, so it's only a little bit more, but it makes you know the the front of the car look nice and long and nice and mean. So and also like a 55, which again, it sort of, you know, it gives that. So sort of long sort of nose in the front and then a nice compact rear and then we can go up to 85 and you can see now the car is getting a little bit more compressed especially the, around the front here it's looking yeah, a bit squashed uh, compared to the rear as it's uh, more in the center of the lens and if we say go for example 105 you can see again the, the front of the car is just becoming a little bit smaller and you know, it looks a bit funny. Um, if you look at the front wheel and look at the rear wheel, you know, they look uh, quite big and quite small. So I think for this one, maybe 55 is looking good. And uh, we can, of course, you can change here all the different um, sensor presets. So, you know, if you shoot a back plate with a APS-C, like a crop uh, sensor, then, you know, you can adjust it to this and match it there. So. And of course, um, with this we have like the clipping. So if there's objects in front of a camera, or so if you're doing an interior shot, for example, you can use the clipping to uh, basically just cut away objects that are too close to the camera. But you know you want to see uh, maybe a bit more of the car, um, and then you don't have to you know hide any geometry. Um, one thing I do like in in the newer versions of Fred is that you have uh, your nice tone mapping. So you know we have physical camera and Personally, I, I prefer to use Filmic. Um, it just gives a bit more a natural feel to the to the um, to the image. And of course, you've got um, now Asus uh, Color Space, uh, which for now we won't talk about because it's a big, complicated subject in itself. So we'll just stick to sRGB. And of course, you have um, Fog, and you can play around with this. You know, if you want to add some fog effects in there and you know, a bit of noise like this, something like that. And um, you know you could play around with this, make some nice cool things. Of course, you have glare, so you know in a sunny day or the weather's lights on, you can. You know, this is a bit too uh, too much, but um, you know we can you know bring that down and maybe took that, take down the threshold, so it's only sort of lights, strong lights. But you know we can make some really nice um, nice effects with the glare and of course the glow and there's you know basic color correction so you could you know make it warmer or make it a bit colder add some more contrast and you know brightness saturations but you can also do that with this so it's uh, fairly fairly good and, you know you can play with the exposure and so yeah i mean personally i i prefer like for example the rear shots it's probably sort of like my favorite sort of three three quarter you know, it's um, sort of the lower you go, you know, the bigger, you know, if you want a you know, big, big sort of action shot like this, you know, you'd see it probably more on a on front of a car magazine. And, you know, you can, you can play around and I sort of, if you want to go really, really crazy, then you can do something like this. But personally, I, I would say between anything like 35 and 85, um, you know that's my kind of my kind of sort of range which I prefer and you know I think most cars will look good between these ranges and you know can get really nice looking shots so you know if you wanted to go up you can get sort of like that zoom lens kind of kind of feel from 85 millimeter and you know if you want to get up nice and close you know these kinds of things these lenses are uh, pretty nice and you know you don't get any sort of crazy distortion like you would with um, you know a much wider lens but you know it's just down to personal preference and you know if, if that's what you like then uh, so be it and yeah it's not a problem but uh, yeah for me as I said between 35 85 
on certain cars maybe go up to 105 then you know the car will generally look good another good feature inside Fred is uh, the sort of the viewpoint or the viewport uh, Another good feature inside Fred is the viewpoint um, creation inside uh, the perspective camera. So what I like to do is right click, go to create and create a viewpoint. And what that will do is just create a, basically a viewpoint as you know the name suggests that will uh, add here and so you can move around and you think okay, I like this angle. And you press capture and you can move around here. And I think you could probably, you know, change uh, Probably focal length, maybe go a bit like this, and then you can go back into your track and press capture again. Yeah, that will just keep adding them, and then you know you can easily switch between these views uh, with just a click of the button. And you know you can just press play, and it'll slowly move through like a slideshow. And that's a great way to just set up uh, sort of you know cameras really quickly and. So if you you can use them to switch between you know it's you might like uh, the angle like this you press capture or you know like maybe a bit lower you can press capture and then you know you can easily compare the two and this is uh, great for you know getting quick feedback and and just overall sort of getting a great idea really quickly on what angles work for the car and which angles don't work for the car so you know it's you know, in 30 seconds you have seven angles and you think okay these are the ones I'll keep you can delete them and you say okay yeah these are the ones that I'll go for and then you can see and uh, one thing you do have to look out for is that um, if you change for example the focal length in here um, it will see as long as you've had this uh, selected it will you know do it straight away whereas if you go into the viewport and then if you, for example, change this to say 35, you won't see that straight away. You have to double click um, just to go back in there and you know you can go back and you can also easily uh, click edit and then go to set to current view and then that will update that new viewpoint uh, to that view that you just created. So I hope that's been helpful for you and the cameras and we can then we can move on to some different uh, lighting types. Okay, so now that we have an understanding how cameras work inside V-RED, we can try and match a camera into a backplate and a HDRI using a HDRI and a backplate from the Asset Manager. So we can go up to Scene and then to Asset Manager. And then here up on the tabs, we have Environments and Scene Plates. So what we can do is we can go to Materials and then we can just drag and drop our HDRI into our environments. And then that will automatically add the HDRI to the environment and enable it in the scene. So we can also then go to the backplates and then we can find our matching backplate and then we can just right click and then add to scene plate editor. So as you can see we have a nice looking sphere, nice road, early morning and uh, what we can do is then we can turn on our scene plate and then we can start to try and match the camera. So what we can do now is open the EXIF data of the backplate and see what focal length was used to take the backplate and a good way to do that is if you head to scene and head to scene plate editor you can look at your scene plate you can right click and press show information another box will pop up with the information from the camera but unfortunately in this backplate there is no information so there's usually you would see in your focal length what lens was used so Another way we can do that was check the website that this uh, backplate was listed on and uh, took me a few minutes to find out that that was actually a 35mm. So what we can do is uh, we can head into our focal length and just change that to 35 And then now our focal length of our camera is that matching the one that it was used to take the backplate. And then it's just a question of sort of playing around, getting a nice idea of... Um, you know where the car might sit in the road you can play around with the roll here as well you know if there's a slight angle on the roll or on the road or in the camera and then of course you can go into your track and create a viewpoint and here's some I already made 
and then you know you just decide which one you like the most and then you can sit with that another good way would be to uh, maybe create some geometry for the road or surrounding so we can go into scene and create a plane and then we can just drop that in and then what I do is just lift it a little bit higher than the actual car or the actual shadow so when you drag it across and then you can see you know you try and match it up with the the road itself and as you can see it's slightly off so we can maybe just rotate the camera a little bit try and try and match it and it'll, it'll never be 100 percent perfect because there's always this lens distortion and things like this which can you know make it a little bit uh, inaccurate but it's a nice sort of way to have a good idea of you know the road and how it follows and things like this so you, you know, want to ride it back a little bit like this and then that could be your road and then we could just hide this and then as you can see the car is slightly off center so what you would do is maybe move the car itself but in this case you know you want to try and keep the car in the same position because then you know you're always on the origin and you could even turn on the grid and just play around with it till you get something that's a little a little bit more accurate so it's there are different ways to do it but you know as long as it looks good and you have the right focal length um, you know camera matching it should look good in the end and as I said just make sure you have the right focal length otherwise the car will look wrong and we can just have a quick test here you know if we drop this down to say 24 millimeter and find a nice position on the road as you can see it just it just doesn't look right something's a little bit off and again if you go to say 85 millimeter which is quite extreme you know you're gonna see again the front of the car is completely off and just doesn't look right at all so as long as you've got the right focal length uh, you can play around until you've got something that looks good obviously it will help if you know you have some reference for example sometimes we use a standing car so you get an idea of the scale an idea of where the position of the car would be on the road and also another good thing to have is the height of the tripod and height of the camera so then in the world space you could place for example your your camera at the right height so here now it's around 100 and uh, 150 centimeters it should be about right and then yeah you can you know dial it in there and you can play around with the roll if there's a little bit of you know tilt in the road or or something like that then you can just do that and play around until you've got something that looks good and I think for now this you know for playing around for a few minutes it looks pretty good and that's how you would match your camera inside Fred